So I decided to put my theory to practice that uh, batteries, uh, lithium ion batteries, could in fact, uh, just like are, are in the Tesla, could in fact uh, lift a person carrying helicopter. Um, I chose this Robinson 44 because as much as I do like to experiment, I could not uh, bring myself to tear apart an $8 million uh, Bell 429. Uh, this helicopter only cost me $400,000, so I said, okay, we'll tear it. If it works in that one, we'll, we'll, we'll get it up there. So my team tore out the guts of a uh, Robinson uh, R44 helicopter. It's actually, I think, the largest selling helicopter in the world, made right in Southern California, and not really far from the Tesla plant, in fact. And we inserted our batteries and our electronics and our e-powertrain. Um, this simplified block diagram will really show you the magic of why um, we have now uh, had, uh, last month, a successful ground test where we powered the helicopter up to 70% over at uh, John Wayne Airport in our hangar over at uh, John Wayne Airport in uh, Orange County. At 70%, the helicopter got light on its skids, which means it's like skipping around like that. That's very analogous to just what happens in a um, helicopter when you pull the collective up to 70% torque. It'll start getting very light on its skids, and above 60%, 70% torque, the helicopter's going to take off and start flying. So uh, we are not allowed to fly the helicopter, John Wayne, so it's being moved right now to um, Alameda. Alameda, um, it's a government military um, uh, airfield just south of uh, John Wayne Airport. So it's being moved over there. Uh, flight tests will be next month, but at 70% when it's light on the skids, I can say with uh, like almost 100% confidence that uh, it will be flying at 100% power. Thank you. Let me pay, pay credit to th some elements of this block diagram, which has really made it uh, hap happen. Uh, first of all, Reinhardt Motion Systems has given us an excellent and highly uh, efficient, dependable inverter. Um, this was really a key uh, piece. We were not able to, to get any batteries from Tesla. They, they asked, uh, the, the other engineers asked me on the team, they said, uh, Martin, maybe you can ask Tesla for batteries. And I said, I only know the people in the service department. <laughs> now I know like the Tesla Motors Club people, so that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> but um, so we, we got them from this. Um, how many are familiar with uh, the motorcycle, the Bramo uh, motorcycles? Yeah, some awesome batteries that they make. So we use uh, the Bramo batteries. They're uh, just about the, uh, the same energy density as the uh, Tesla batteries. And, um, and then this was the final and, and most challenging engineering piece was the uh, Yasa electric motor. So first, this is the normal engine in that helicopter. I mean, it's huge. It's, it's literally this big. I mean, it would feel like a, a Maytag washing machine box. Here is what it was re replaced with. And it's mostly just that box, actually. There's the actual motor right there. It literally like would fit. You could hold it in your hand. It's a, le a Yasa electric motor. Um, the, the challenge for us is to have an electric motor that has a, uh, the performance that we need, but at a relatively low RPM, because ultimately we have to couple all of this to the main rotor. And Yasa was able to uh, deliver for us uh, better than any other electric motor out there. So this is not one that they currently have for sale, but they produced it and they plan to be making them available to sale for other applications. So this is something that is off the shelf, but not yet commercially off the shelf.